what does it mean to be tough? How is it measured? It's a question actor, host, former athlete, and now author Terry Crews has asked himself as he navigates Hollywood, fatherhood, and his own personal path to growth. I had the opportunity to talk with him about his new book, Tough, My Journey to True Power. And now you're back from our space. I didn't say he knew all the words. How did you know? I love this song. Make him a way downtown. What's my name? Terry Jeffords. What is my name? The Ebony Falcon. You know, I think that the first thing that, that struck me was that, that football basically saved your life. You credit it anyway with, with saving your life. You say that you took all your rage and you poured it out on the field. It, just give us a sense for, for people who haven't read the book just yet how meaningful football was. Football got me out of Flint, Michigan. I like to say that, you know, it's hard to play in the NFL with two good parents uh, because you play with pain. What will help you on the field uh, is, is literally called road rage in real life. So there was a lot of unlearning I had to do after the NFL. But let's talk about another outlet because I think a lot of people won't be aware that you're really an artist. Right. And, and, right. and tell us, do you still actively create in that world? I draw, I sketch. I actually had my portfolio in at Disney and at DreamWorks uh, when I first moved to L.A. in 1997. But what happened was the hand-drawn animation world actually collapsed once Toy Story came out, and I became an actor instead. What did he give you? He gave me a yogurt fridge, all right? I asked for a yogurt fridge, and I got one right next to my desk. I'm only a man. Um, so I had an art scholarship before I had a football scholarship. So I was kind of forced into making a choice, either be an athlete or an artist, but I never, I said, I'm going to be both. And it, it actually helped me to kind of stand alone in a lot of ways. And, and you talk about being both, but really you're, you're the three A's, right? The, the actor, artist, and athlete. And I also found it interesting you talked about Carol Burnett, which was a show I loved as well. Surprise, surprise! And how that was something that kind of turned on your your ability to create joy for your mother, right? Absolutely. First of all, you know, it's always been my dream and what and what I got the most joy out of, because again, my household was a very abusive household. I remember my mother, she was basically nursing a black eye mm -hmm. and she had like so, some frozen peas on her eye and we would watch Carol Burnett and I remember redoing these sketches for her. You will run the gamut of emotion. Yes. Give me jealousy. Jealousy. Love. <laughs> Anger. Pity. <laughs> fear. Mm. And even in the midst of her pain, she was laughing and cracking up and I said, this is a superpower. Like, mm. I want this forever. And, and you also, if, if come clean even prior to the book in a, a number of ways when you talk about your uh, past addiction to, to pornography or, or your sexual assault. But what I thought was interesting in the book is when you said when you kept it to yourself, it was bigger. And it was once you shared it that, that it made it smaller. Things like addictions, they thrive in secrecy. Mm -hmm. You know, it's something that you don't tell anybody. It becomes your little thing, your little secret. But also, you, you you are alone in your own pain. And you can really revel in that. And once I decided to be transparent and vulnerable, it opened up a whole new world for me. Because you have to understand, uh, this is not the world of most men. Um, men tend to be very secretive. And I realized to kind of lean in and go into the wind on that, and it actually saved my life. And, and you write at one point in the book that, that your life is an open book. In fact, you're reading it right now. Was this cathartic for you? Things start to get much more clear the, the moment you start to write down what it is you believe and where you came from. The message of this book is really all about really getting into your own life and assembling things the way you want them to be. Um, that's when I call, that's what I call true power. And, and you end the book um, talking about your mom and, and what she said to you and reflecting on, on her death and, and a letter that she had written to you. Life is too short to be unforgiving, but I wanted to let you have your space. If that is what you wanted, all things are possible with Jesus Christ and I believe in you. Uh, what reaction do you have to those words today? Oh, my goodness. First of all, you know, my mom passed away in 2015. And, um, you know, 
one thing I, I'm really, really big on is reconciliation. Mm. Reconciliation is my message for life. It's either between black and white, between male and female, between Republican and Democrat. Unless reconciliation is the first thing we're talking about, what we're doing, unless we do that, we're just staving off a future, you know, a future battle. My mother was so special to me because that didn't mean we had to agree. It just meant that we came to terms with each other. We accepted each other. What would you like readers to, to take away from the book? Is it the assembly required? <laughs> the thing I want to get is that this is tough. Mm. It's tough. It's really, really hard to go inside and, and dig deep and understand that, wait a minute, I wasn't, these things I didn't learn the correct way. I, I, I grew up in a world of misogyny. I grew up thinking that just because I was a man, I was more valuable than every woman in my life. Um, and there were a lot of things I had to unlearn. And, and this is my last question. You, you just brought up something that reminded me of it. You talk about toxic masculinity in the book. Explain what that is. The phrase I like to use is abuse of power is basically what it's about. These bits of rage came from out of nowhere for me. And I had to examine why I was doing, I was going to ruin my own life. And uh, I was definitely the, the most toxic male in my circle. And I had to revamp. The day my wife said, that's enough. I've had enough. I'm out. I was like, oh my God, I, I know I need to change. There's got to be something different. Terry Crews, we thank you so much for, for opening up in the book and, and with us tonight. We appreciate your time. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.